How's it going folks? It's Rob here. Time for a long overdue update on the aquaponics system, which is, you know, good timing really, because now we're officially in winter. So I'll give you a bit of a gander at that. And next week, hopefully, see that new fence there? I'll give you a bit of a video looking at the landscaping, because hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll knock it off all this week. So stop nattering, flip the camera around, give you a gander. So I thought we'd start off with the fish. These fellas here are the Australian native jade perch. They're also called the Baku grunter. Now they're a warm climate fish, so they don't really like our winters, although they can tolerate them as long as the water's kept at the right temperature. Pretty happy with the way they're going. Some of them down in there would be well and truly over the 500 gram or one pound mark. And a few of the smaller ones probably got a month or two to go once they start feeding again. Just quickly while we're looking at the fish, a bit of spruiking. Um, I have got a guide in the works for the aquaponics builds and helping folks out who are new to aquaponics. Um, I'm not creating it, someone's creating it for me. So there will be a little bit of a charge on it, um, but I am looking at trying to make it as affordable as possible for you backyard growers, because I know everyone's pretty much all strapped for cash at the moment, ourselves included. Um, so it will be something that will be coming to our website fairly soon. Oh, and just on our website as well, uh, let you folks know that I have done a little bit of an upgrade there. So for you Aussies who are interested in buying some uni seals, you can now just click through straight to the um, cart or the checkout. You don't have to email me with your order. So that's made things a lot more efficient than they used to be. And uh, there will be more aqu aquaponic products coming to that website soon. And for you folks in the state, you can always click on our Amazon affiliate links. Uh, but that's enough of me spruiking myself. As you can see, the water is very crystal clear at the moment, and that's pretty much all just down to them not being fed a lot at the moment, probably three times a week. So yeah, then just not a lot of solids floating around in the fish water there. But you can tell by their fat bellies, they're not losing any condition whatsoever. So they have lots of stored fat in their bellies, these fellas in particular. So they'll have no problems overwintering in these colder conditions. I do have a heater in there at the moment. I prefer not to run one. Uh, but we've had a bit of a cold snap um, blow up from the Antarctic. So this week the heat has been on every day. And just to give you some idea on the water temp, we are running at the moment at 16 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees Celsius. So normally these guys stop metabolizing their food at 18 degrees Celsius. And it's been recommended to me by the perch man, might as well trust the expert, g'day Bruce if you're there, that they, they really can't handle a high protein feed at that temperature of 18 degrees. So you're better off giving them just leafy greens and then uh, put them back on the pellets once it gets a bit warmer. So my cutoff is around about 20 degrees. Um, you folks with other fish species, I mean, people with trout, your trout would be loving it at uh, this temperature. Um, but yeah, we just can't keep them here in southeast Queensland. Um, pH wise, it's going to take a while to settle down, but I can guarantee you it's going to be between 6.6 and 6.7 because there is not a lot of feed going into the system and it's that uh, processing of the ammonia through to nitrite and then through to nitrate that uses up a lot of alkalinity in the system. That's the amount of carbonates that buffers the pH. And as those carbonates are chewed up, your pH will drop down. That process does sound complicated to some, but you know, once you understand it, um, just the basics of it, it's pretty easy to uh, just be able to monitor your pH and then adjust it as need be. Won't get into that here though. Uh, the system itself is looking very green, but on closer inspection, you will see that there is some, um, some chlorosis uh, between the veins, intervenial chlorosis it's called. Uh, I have a sneaking suspicion it's due to both iron and uh, magnesium deficiency. The reason being is if you feed your fish enough feed, they get all the nutrients they need through the feed, uh, depending on how many plants you have out in the beds. These fish here, because they're being cut down to a fraction of what they normally feed through summer, those extra nutrients aren't making it through to the bed. And I dropped the ball just being preoccupied with other stuff. So over the last week, I have fed the bed up with both magnesium, which is basically Epsom salts, and also some chelated iron, uh, and I use a DTPA product. You can see on the newer leaves, we, they are a lot darker. Uh, they don't really have the chlorosis. Actually, they have no chlor chlorosis, which is good. To tell you the truth, I haven't checked it in the last two days. And the same over here on the kale, if you can see it just down in there. I think I've adjusted it enough that, um, yeah, we're not going to have any issues with that. I'm also putting in a little bit of kelp 
um, <clears throat> just to help with the other nutrients that may be lacking. I don't have to worry about nitrates off the chart still uh, because of the amount of fish feed that's gone through the system. So it's just those other nutrients that are needed. And to be tell you the truth, I haven't added a lot of potassium or calcium either because I ge generally add them in to adjust the pH when it falls really low. So um, yeah, none of that has gone in. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, that little bit of seaweed will help boost the other elements in the system. Uh, the cabbages are doing really well. Really happy about how they're going. I did have a few issues, um, as you would have seen in the last couple of clips with the cabbage butterfly. Uh, this white powder is the remnants of a uh, Bacillus thuringiensis or BT spray. It's a um, it fish friendly mammal, amphibian, birds, reptile friendly um, bacteria only attacks the guts of caterpillars. Um, so that's what I use to control these guys. In the future, I would like to have some sort of netting that goes over the top of all of our aquaponics so I don't have to worry about spraying. So the broccoli over here in this bed is doing fairly good so far by the look of it. We didn't see much intervenial chlorosis in these guys, um, but I am, I am worried that the heads may not form as large as they normally would because of the lack of nutrients. Um, so, well, fingers crossed. I mean, worst case scenario, we'll just nip off the leaves and use them in stir, stir fries and the like. Um, and just show you another reason why I think we do have nutrient deficiencies is things like this plant here, which is a fairly large eggplant a whole load of eggplants down there that need to come off so that will be sucking a lot of nutrient from the system and likewise the big RG Amarillo um, chili over there it will be doing the same thing and even that chard that I should have harvested again last week but was too busy um, should really be picked as well basically you know the larger the plant the more nutrients are going to draw from the system uh, this one here I'm actually going to give a chop in a minute all the fruit I'm just going to take off. We might make up some roast eggplant dip, um, garlic and eggplant dip. It's always very nice and tasty. Is a bread spread or just as on a cracker and then remove the whole plant from the system. I do have another one growing down the back, so I'm not too concerned about losing this one here. This tomato here would probably be sucking a load of nutrients as well. And I will be giving her a small trim back, mainly just uh, a lot of the older leaves. And I might take off um, some of the suckers that are coming out the sides as well. Uh, we are getting a load of nice fruit on her. I don't actually remember the name. I think it was a blueberry uh, tomato or something along those lines. So they have a purple fruit to begin with, and then they ripen up to a nice fat, juicy um, cherry style tomato. Uh, just to show you down here, I did miss some of the uh, sweet potato slip when I took it out. So we have a little bit growing there. Kang Kong's dying off with the cold. Just down in here, we do have a poor little stunted um, sweet pepper or capsicum to us Aussies. Uh, just a couple of small fruit there. Not getting a lot of sunlight. So yeah, probably won't do the best through winter. And I've noticed all the little flowers that were on there have fallen off. So a bit of a shame, but such is. And just down here, we have some uh, Chinese chives and some more broccoli, mushroom herb, and other bits and pieces. Now over here, the chard. The chard really does need to come off. And around here, we just have our little onion area. Uh, we have some, these are actually Chinese red shallots that we've been just chopping off like chives when need be. Uh, we've actually got a fairly large patch down the back we're trying to clear out first. Um, perennial leek, I've got a few dotted around the place. Uh, purple Brussels sprout that we uh, took pity on. So I popped her in that little space there. And yes, the RG Amarillo. I'm actually thinking about pulling this whole plan out because um, one fell off and we have a load of seedlings pop up there so you might just harvest the fruit from here save a load of seeds to um, give away to friends and family and then um, yeah let these guys just stay in there for next season just before we go I wanted to show you my Chinese cabbage uh, that's not the normal Wombok variety we grow this is one a seedling uh, mate gave me thank you very much Mark actually gave me two there's another one down in there but it's a little bit shaded as you can see winter sun's coming from that direction and everything on the right hand side of the bed is tending to get a little bit shaded out um, so that one will come out and then uh, that one should take off a little bit but yeah uh, definitely a little bit different to the normal wombok cabbage so really looking forward to tasting that one and it would be a little bit mean of me to go without showing you the eggplant harvest uh, a little bit hard to see them there we might just move into the shade there we go pop them on the laundry trolley um, so a lot of these eggplants like I said will end up being uh, roasted with some garlic and used as a, um, a dip. These small ones down in here, I might just stick them aside and they can just be sliced up and popped into a stir fry. So 
There you go, a little bit of a uh, look at the eggplant harvest. So I do hope you're enjoying a little bit of our gander at how the aquaponics is going. And yes, there will be an update on that fence and the landscaping coming in the next week or two. Um, they're pretty much all going to finish off the, um, the fence and they've, then they've got some soil profiling to do and they've offered to um, bring some fill in for us as well. So I don't know if I'll wait until after the fill's brought in or once the fence is in, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, before I go though, I really do need to thank you all some folks who are supporting us through the YouTube membership program and also our Farm Your Own Yard supporters page. If you want to check them out, there's links down below. Um, but the best way to support this channel is to come along every week, say good day down in the comments section and give us a thumbs up and share it with your family and friends. We really would appreciate that. But enough of that, I will let you folks go. I do hope you're all well and happy and your aquaponics and your veggie patch is booming and I'll catch you next vid. Cheers folks, take it easy. Just thought I'd add this in quickly at the end folks. Um, the root ball here is pretty much all just going to be left on top of the bed here, let to dry out and then it makes it a lot easier to get all these little clay balls out. Um, they can be fairly expensive, so I like to save them as much as I can from the system. Uh, one of the good things about taking that out is it's opened up a lot of sunlight to go over and hit that sweet pepper or capsicum over there. So yeah, that's always a good thing too. So I will pretty much all leave it there though and let you go this time. Have a top one folks and I'll catch you next week.